Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I wanted to just sit down and share my potential reading for Women's History Month. So for the past two years I've done Women's History Month TBRs and I, I like to have it as a kind of reference point to, to come back to as well. Uh, so today I'm just going to share with you some books that I would love to read in March or p potentially just read the rest of this year to celebrate women's history. Um, and for for a change I actually have a mix of fiction and non-fiction, mostly non-fiction with a few fiction in there as well. March is also March Mystery Madness, uh, which is a readathon all about mysteries. I might get to some um, as well, but I have other things that I need to prioritize, such as the Booktube Prize um, that I am making my way through. Uh, I'll get back to that in a second. One fairly chunky book is this collection of letters. Um, the, Swedish just the, the Swedish title is Jag har också levat. Um, and these are letters between uh, between Astrid Lindgren and Louise Hartung. And I'm fairly certain that this has been translated um, into English. Uh, and yeah, it is letters, I think a lot of the letters center around the Second World War. Um, I've been wanting to read these particularly because uh, for a long time I've been uh, wanting to read more of Astrid Lindgren's non-fiction writing um, and I've heard that uh, she had she was really really active in uh, letter writing and diary writing during the war um, so I've been interested in, in exploring those just as sort of a historical document um, with the with the current situation of the world uh, it I think this type of writing is even more something that I'm drawn to. I think since the pandemic I've been really drawn to letter writing particularly, um, like intimate writing or personal writing of authors and I think there's something comforting in it um, to see the way people frame their experiences, to see how they make sense of what is happening in in their lives and in the world. If I pick this up in March, I won't be reading the entire thing. I will just be dipping into it. But this is one option I have. In the same vein, I have Brie from Tovianson or Letters from Tovianson. Um, and this is the same thing for uh, this author, of course. Um, so this is a collection of her letters to different recipients. Uh, I think it's divided into her family, uh, her closest friends, her partners. And I've actually read at least a fifth of this before, uh, but I've been wanting to return to it for a long time. And for me, Tove Jansson is one of those iconic women figures of history. I've read a lot of, quite a lot of her writing and uh, another biography on her. Uh, but as I said, this is a letter compilation and um, from the parts of this that I read, I really, really enjoyed it. it. A lot of them talked about sort of the art scene of the 20s and 30s and a lot of traveling, um, love and work, which is definitely main themes in her life story. Uh, but yeah, I find Tove Jansson really, really, really um, inspiring and iconic as a creator, as an artist, as a writer. Uh, so this is again one that I've been wanting to return to um, and dip into. I won't be reading the entire thing but maybe read samples of this and the other letter collection during March. I'm gonna take a sip of coffee in my Moomin mug. How fitting. I mentioned the booktube prize and I am judging the nonfiction group E and in this uh, group there is actually two books that fits perfectly with Women's History Month as a theme. Uh, so the first one is one I'm currently listening to on audio, that one is The Codebreaker, uh, which is uh, by Walter Isaacson and a biography about Jennifer Doudna, um, as well as talking about gene editing on a uh, in a general way and sort of uh, the science behind it and the battles in, in in sort of within this particular 
uh, area of science. Uh, but quite a lot of this book is centrally about Jennifer Doudna as a scientist, as a person and her her story. The other one that is from the Book 2 Prize that it also fits this theme is The Doctor's Blackwell. How Two Pioneering Sisters Brought Medicine to Women and Women to Medicine by Janice P. Nimura. Uh, Nimura. This again is sort of science slash I would say medical history um, and also a kind of biography. Uh, so they are sort of within the same vein in terms of, of the topic. Uh, even though Jennifer Down is a very contemporary, um, contemporary biography in comparison to this, of course, uh, is more with a historical lean. Uh, so those two, as I said, I will be reading this month for sure um, because of the Book 2 Prize. The next one I have is one I would really love to get to and is actually also a doable <laughs> book for me to get to because it's uh, very short. And that is Youth by Tove Ditlevsen. And I actually have this in the Danish because I was interested to see if how it would feel to read in Danish. I haven't read a full-length novel in Danish before. Um, I haven't done that for Norwegian either. I've read course literature in Norwegian. So I got this one uh, in the beginning of the year just out of curiosity to see how uh, it would feel to read this in the original Danish. Um, as well as wanting to continue on with the trilogy. This is part of the Copenhagen trilogy. I'm counting this as autobiographical, not necessarily autobiography, um, but it is Tove Ditlevsen's um, childhood and youth in growing up in Copenhagen and in this, in this part she talks about starting to work um, and finding her, finding her purpose in writing, I think, uh, or just being interested in becoming a writer. Uh, so it, as I said, it's fairly short, so hopefully reading in Danish won't be too difficult. But this one I would love to get to, and uh, because childhood, the first part in the trilogy, is set around the 20s, I'm guessing this one is more 30s and 40s. Um, so yeah, there's that. And then the last of the nonfiction we have Walking Through Fire, uh, the later years of Nawal El Sadawi in her own words, and this one was translated by uh, Sherif, Sherif Hitata. So this one I actually started again last year, um, soon after her passing, uh, which was February, I think, or March. Um, so I, I started reading this one a year ago and read a fifth of it and I would love to return to it. As the title says, it's the later part of her life when she is in exile and has some uh, trouble in being able to do her work freely. So parts of this is set in Egypt um, where Nawal El Sadawi uh, was born. Um, but part of it is also set in other places because of her exile and having to move um, to do her work. And she was an activist and uh, very outspoken about her opinions. Uh, so yeah, I, I find her a very, very interesting uh, woman as well um, and would love to return to this one. Next we have an anthology and this is a Book of Wayward Girls and Wicked Women uh, and this is edited by a Angela Carter. Uh, I've never actually read uh, any Angela Carter but as I said this is an anthology and it includes authors such as uh, let's see, Leonora uh, Carrington, who um, I think this short story I've actually read before. Uh, it includes short stories by Catherine Mansfield, Colette, um, Vernon Lee, Jamaica Kincaid, um, Lou Oshu. So there's tons of authors included in this and the whole point of this anthology is women who behave 
against the grain or against the norm. Some of these stories celebrate toughness and resilience, some of them low cunning, all of them are about not being nice. So this theme seemed uh, fitting for the theme of women's history and all kinds of lives and all kinds of women. Next we have a novel that is written by an author I have wanted to explore for ages and I thought Women's History Month is a good excuse to get to it. Uh, so this is Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway. I actually have several of Virginia Woolf's books or novels particularly um, and I haven't read any of them. I've read A Room of One's Own years ago and I liked it and I thought it was interesting and then I ended up collecting all of her novels and not getting to any of them uh, in these beautiful uh, vintage editions. I would love to get to Virginia Woolf and I think the main reason I haven't is just that I feel intimidated by the stream of consciousness that she's known for, uh, particularly because because of the sense that I have to read the entire thing in one gulp instead of splitting it up and f trying to find the time when I have that time to dedicate to reading a book without any pauses. Uh, so because that time never comes, I thought that I could at least give it a try. It, it seems like this is easier to get into in comparison to some of her other books. Uh, I know it is about a party or a hostess of a party planning and sort of welcoming guests uh, and I think it follows just that one um, party that she is hosting. That's all I know about this story. The last one I have is a poetry collection. So one of my goals this year, as I mentioned a few times, is that I want to read more poetry. Uh, and I've been trying to make that happen little by little. Um, but this one I wanted to pick up because of Ross from Skelly Dandling with the books or through the books. Skelly, Skelly Dandling about the books. I will link her channel below. Uh, she did a Poetry Tuesday video, I think, where she read one of the poems in this collection. I uh, really liked the sound of it, so I decided to pick this one up from my library immediately. So this is The Why of Iris uh, by Louise Gluck, and this is poetry on nature, I think. And the poem that she read out loud was called Snowdrops. Uh, very fitting for the beginning of spring. Uh, so uh, as I said, I will link her channel as well as the particular video below so you can get a sample of it and be maybe drawn to picking this one up as well. Those are all of the books that I have for this Women's History Month TBR. Uh, let me know what you are planning to read for this month, if you are reading anything for Women's History Month or March Mystery Madness or any of the other many readathons or reading projects that is always going on around booktube. Uh, I also am planning to read, uh, as I mentioned, my, my booktube prize reading. And for Invisible Cities, I want to start reading my uh, Norway books as well. Um, so lots of books to choose from. Uh, but yeah, today I just wanted to sort of focus in on this particular theme. Uh, and that was all I wanted to say. I hope you're doing uh, well and you're taking care of yourselves and I will talk to you soon. Bye.